Is there a connection between Trump and Diddy? We're going to find out because it looks like there might be. Now, this guy's name is Jonathan Audi. And we're going to break down and tear apart his body language. We're going to tell you what we think is going on with it. Greg, tell us about the videos we're going to watch. In 2018, Jonathan Audi went into Trump's hotel, Doral, and placed a large flag from the grounds up on the counter, started shooting the place up. Five officers came in, exchanged fire, injured him in the legs, took him in for interview. This is that interview. A troll came because he used to belong to their side. You understand? He used to belong to that illuminated group that I told him about, which is an elite group, okay, of individuals which run the whole country. All right, all right. Along the left. Basically, what I did, did you talk about explaining about the message or talk? Oh, please, please, please elaborate. On Thursday, Tony to Friday, basically, I went into Dark Trump. I went through the the gates. I took a, the, no, sorry, chunk of cash. I took the other fire up on the front desk and I threw the shout out here. I basically, what I did that for is, to transmit a statement to the American people, at Donald Trump, that we're not accepting any more corruption and abuse from their system of friends. You know, okay? Donald's still blind because he thinks that he had she made theory off the hook and she's okay. You understand what I'm saying? We're trying, okay, keep going. Um it ain't like that. The CIA and then they want to do the same thing they think she could JF. K. Okay. Find a boy. Because they want the United States to fall. They will, they've already been creating a state of chaos and confusion, right? But we want the United States to fall. Darwin was against their agenda. And we won the presidency. Okay. He did get help from Russia. He did get help from the Saudis. He also got help from a lot of Republicans. In India, which is a continental college hall. And he got a lot of support from Rick Potter's and Pete. Oh, yeah. But, um, the elections, yeah, they weren't there, but he wanted the electrical college bolts. Right, right. Which is the Republican bolt, basically, according to it, okay? He didn't get the, the popular. Popular. And I tried, I, I did. He so basically, the interior, he got, he made it. He's president elect by electoral college. So he made. The situation is that he still hasn't kicked out the corruption from the system. He's letting this stay due to a uh, money base. Because they all like making money. That's why they're all billionaires, etc. So there's only a few this select few of that run the country. All the all right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, okay. This time around, maybe not so much on body language. We will have some, but maybe not so much. I'm really interested in the stories that are being told here, the narratives, because in my view, environment is part of what pushes us towards the behaviours that we have. And part of our environment is the stories around us from other people and also the ones that are going on in our mind. Obviously, there are stories, there are narratives which are true and there are ones that aren't so true. We'll have a look at what we might think are true narratives here and not so true. But certainly, the stories being told are part of everybody's environment, certainly in these videos. So you've got a storyteller here, and he is very matter-of-fact, I would say. Very matter-of-fact around this. Now, does that mean that he's talking about fact just because he's matter-of-fact? Well, I would say that in this first video, we don't get a lot of first-hand testimony. That's when somebody is talking about something where they were actually there, they actually saw it. We've got a lot of second and third-hand testimony of like, well, you know, this person says or this person says about this. It doesn't often, the guy doesn't often say, look, this is second and third-hand testimony. He kind of reports stuff as if he knows it to be factual. Uh, however, there is uh, a moment here which is true first-hand testimony, which is testimony, which is I went to Donald Trump. 
talking not talking about Donald Trump personally. He's talking about the hotel. I went to Donald Trump, and at that point, he leans forward and he barriers. He puts his his hands in uh, as a barrier in front of him. Now, often we talk about barriers, and we might say, "Okay, somebody's barriering." That might be a bit of a problem. There, Greg, you might often say, "Kind of, they're taking holy ground. They're creating space around them." In this case here. We know he went to Donald Trump. We have film of him, video of him at Donald Trump. He was picked up and I believe arrested at Donald Trump. So we know firsthand testimony, he's telling the truth about something and he barriers there. Now, why does he barrier? I'm not going to go into that, but it's important. First-hand testimony of a fact, he barriers. We're going to see that later on when he barriers around some very tricky stuff that he's talking about. So interesting to have that there. But the narrative here about Trump, the person, is Trump used to be uh, Illuminati. Uh, You know, he used to be somebody who who was powerful and under the side of bad in this narrative. And now he's on the good side. So Trump used to be bad. Now he's good. We have a world here where the guy here says there is good and bad. And Trump was bad, but now he's good. We've got what we call a Hegelian, you know, almost kind of Marxist narrative here. You've got bad and you've got good. And if you're bad, you're part of the elite and you have power. And if you're good, you're against the elite to have power. So it's pretty kind of Marxist rhetoric going on here. Uh, that's all I got on that one. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, Mark, I'm with you 100%. This, just because somebody barriers does not mean that they are hiding something. It could be an, another reason. Maybe it's because this is a hot point and I need to share with you and I'm not sure you're going to perceive it. We can't read that. We can't read the fact that when he tells this fact, he does lean in. Let's talk about a couple of things. He's going to tell a bunch of crazy stories, a bunch of things that you might think, why don't they ask more questions? This is the Secret Service. They have a job. Their job is to find out, did this guy act alone? Is there someone else? This is not me interested in his story. This is not storytelling. So they're going to come in and they're going to have intelligence collection requirements and a list, a checklist, mental or physical, who knows. And I, just to give you an example, the first Gulf War, I go in and we went into the skiff. There were three of us together and they gave us decks of intelligence collection requirements. Now, you can't carry them with you. You just had to familiarize yourself as much as you could. And that's the way for deployed folks work. Guys in a cage will reference a number in a, in a specific intelligence collection requirement and then write a report about it. And then they'll share that stuff with other people via systems today, via systems even back then in the 80s. They would share information with these folks. So if they're looking for something a guy talked about, they'll come and talk to him too. That makes sense to you. They're not going to spend a lot of time on that kind of thing. It makes us less interested in gossip and more likely to say that's hearsay and and annotate it that way. Hey, Chase, I thought you'd probably have something to say about him throwing my Illuminati sign because he's constantly doing what I do when I do Maslow. No, it's not some kind of conspiracy. He uses the word um as he pontificates. Let me give you a tool, really simple tool. There are five pieces of body language I try to get people to get their head around. Gestures, just a sign that everybody understands. Illustrators, when you punctuate your thoughts. Regulators, when you're controlling the conversation, adapters, when you're releasing nervous energy, and barriers, when you put something between us. Of those five, three are used in driving home your point, typically. Illustrators, regulators, and gestures are trying to send your message. When you're uncomfortable because your brain knows that the story you're telling is not the story it knows, then the other two become more prevalent, typically, those being barriers and adapters. So if you look at it this way, as a targeting tool only, when the threes outweigh the twos, when meaning you've got more of gestures, illustrators, and regulators than adapters and barriers, you're probably okay. When you start seeing more of those other two, of the barriers and the adapters, it's a targeting thing. So let's keep our eyes on that. Pay attention to him as he goes forward. But this guy doesn't have a rational mind. We can already start to see things. I interrogated one, a guy one time and had to use an interpreter. His Arabic was all messed up. i never forget that he said he had had his head in a shaking machine. I don't know what that was, but he sure acted like he had had his head in a shaking machine. His sentences did not go together. It was like a schizophrenic talking to a schizophrenic. But that doesn't mean he didn't see something valuable. So these guys have to listen, no matter how crazy the story is, no matter how outlandish and broken it is, because there's a possibility that there's something in there. Mark, I'll go one last thing. We know that he has read some of the stuff and heard some of the stuff on YouTube. 
Otherwise, he would know it's not the Electrical College. I'm going to mention the D word, debt. Don't go, stay with me, because the cold hard truth is that nobody wants to talk about debt or think about it. But the same cold hard truth is that many of us will get deeper into debt during the holidays. Last year, half of American consumers took on debt to pay for the holidays. This year could be you, this year could be me. And it's never too early to start planning to get out. PDS Debt can help with a personalized solution just for you. Customized options if you want to get on top of credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical bills. If you're making payments every month on your debt and your balances aren't going down, PDS Debt has solutions for you. Everyone with $10,000 or more of eligible debt qualifies. There's no minimum credit score required. Bad and fair credit is accepted. PDS Debt will look to understand your specific scenario and can help provide alternative solutions to becoming debt-free faster. So you can save money while paying off your debt in a fraction of the time. And look, here's my experience of this. It's so easy not to think about it, so easy to sweep it under the carpet, to stick it in the back cupboard somewhere and not think about it. But the sooner you look at good tools, good solutions and get a plan together, the sooner you can move towards getting out of that pit of debt. So look, start planning today. Get a free debt analysis right now at pdsdebt.com slash tbp. It only takes 30 seconds, 30 seconds of your life to start getting this together. That's pdsdebt.com slash tbp. Chase, what do you got? It may be electric, Greg. <laughs> For all you know. But I, I totally agree with you, man. Uh, these disjointed thoughts and the belief in being part of a bigger mission to expose some kind of corruption point towards a possible delusional thing going on here. He mixes real political events with conspiracy theories, like his references to the CIA, JFK, and Trump. And from a psychological perspective, this kind of behavior can stem from stress, sleep deprivation, or psychiatric conditions like psychosis, bipolar disorder, even drug use or neurological issues can affect a person and have them start connecting dots that doesn't really that don't really connect. And from a cognitive standpoint, there's rapid shifts in these topics. There's no logical connection. There's a fixation on the conspiracy theories and, and being persecuted. There's a belief in having a critical role in exposing corruption or being part of this big significant event. So now we have some grandiosity maybe showing itself. And this could be something as simple as cortisol, like Stress hormones can cause impulsive, erratic behavior. There could be schizophrenia, bipolar mania, or other psychoses can result in some of these thinking and, and fragmented speech patterns that we're seeing here. Stimulants, hallucinogens can do this, but I think what we're seeing here is not acute. So a lot of these things where, where you see this happen in somebody, those are acute things that happen suddenly and they're not chronic or what, what we call subacute. <laughs> Sleep deprivation can also cause this stuff. And uh, the gesture that we see here is forming this circle, this Illuminati symbol that Greg uh, uses all the time to talk about Maslow's pyramid while secretly saying hello to his Illuminati brethren uh, on YouTube. It, it, this, I think this conveys some precision, some control, some emphasis is what he's trying. Like he's framing an idea of something that he thinks is really significant. And he uses the words, I think, elite secret group, I think. And I think this could be his way of trying to give physical form to an abstract idea. So people use their hands all the time to 
just reinforce what they're talking about, especially when they're talking about something that they see as symbolic or important. So the diamond shape is sometimes linked to these conspiracy theories like Illuminati. So he might be unconsciously mimicking a symbol there that he associates with power or secrecy. And that could help him to make his beliefs feel more real and tangible and concrete. That's all I got there, Scott. All right. Well, he starts when he starts talking about what he's calling the Illuminate right out of the gate. That's a red flag for me. Anytime anybody brings up the Illuminati and don't even say it right, that makes me go, do I, dude? So and I think these guys are doing a great job. The interrogators, the, the Secret Service guys of holding back and just just listening, just let this guy puke up all this information for him. So I think they're doing a great job of because that's tough. When somebody starts down that road, you know, you're going to go, well, hang on a minute, man. What are you talking about? They don't do that because they know they need all the information they can possibly get from. Them. So instead of going back to the why he's there. Which, which is the the main thing, the main point of this is to find out what was going on and how he ended up at uh, in the situation he is now on that Friday. So his illustrators are strong and they're fluid and they're big because he's confident with what he has to say. And so we know that that's that's something that's that's common with someone who's confident because we see that's why we see politicians doing that. We see them using the they when they used to use the the pointer thing. Now they do this or they'll do this, so it's not as aggressive looking for them. Then he slaps the table, right? And this lets us know as well. Hey, man, I got something to tell you. Here it is. And he does that and scoots forward. Now <clears throat> he uses a face that I, when I first saw this face, I knew what it was on on this video. But one of the first times I saw it, I didn't understand what I was seeing. And I'd been asked to take a look at a person, and uh, I had video of it. And I couldn't figure out what was happening, and this was like 10 years ago. So I called up Greg and said, hey, man, I'm seeing something. I don't know what, what, what is this, what's going on with this guy's face. I sent it to Greg. He looked at it. I said, oh, okay, here it is. It's his teaching face, and that's what this guy's doing. He's trying to teach these guys what's happening. There's a specific look you get for some people when you start teaching people something, and that's what this guy's got as he's telling this. So I'd never put that together and, and had a name for it, a teaching face, but that's what it was, and it comes in these specific at times when someone's telling you the way it is or what's happening and let me explain to you what's going on. That's why we get that slap on the table and he scoots in like that. Now, his cadence speeds up, his, his voice tone and volume get just a little bit louder. But again, I think that comes with confidence in what he's saying. So I, so this is these are all really important because as wacko as what he s says sounds, he, I think his cat believes this man. I think he's, I think he's in. I think he, there's no question for him. He believes this stuff to be true. Then he leans back and he folds his hands and he's, re and, and clearly and fluidly, he says, uh, the, the things he's talking about sound real. If you didn't, if you're listening to something, if you were talking about anything else, it could, you could possibly take it for, for reality. So I think it's a combination of one or two things happening here. Number one, this is something, I think, Greg, you were saying the same thing. It's something that he's heard and he's repeating, or he's just, his brain is blasted and he's talking about something that he believes to be real that isn't real. You know, and we could talk about uh, schizophrenia, you know, paranoid schizophrenic, which at this point I'm seeing hints of that, for, in my opinion, may not be, maybe just just fine. But it looks to me like we might be dealing with someone with paranoid schizophrenia. That's all I got. Be good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay, because he used to belong to their side. You understand? He used to belong to that illuminated group that I told him about, which is an elite group, okay, of individuals which run the whole country. All right? All right? Along the elite. Basically, what I did, did you talk about explaining about the message? Or talk oh, you to please, please elaborate. On... Thursday, Tony to Friday, basically, I went into Dark Trump. I went through the the gates. I took a, the, no, sorry, chunk of cash. I took down there to the fire in the front desk and I threw the shout out here. I basically, what I did that for is to transmit a statement to American people at Dark Trump that we're not accepting any more corruption and abuse from their system of friends. You know, okay? Donald's still blind because he thinks that he had she knit theory off the hook and she's okay. You understand what I'm saying? We're trying, okay, keep going. Um, it ain't like that. The CIA 
And then they want to do the same thing they did to JFK, called Jack Bonnebois, because they want the United States to fall. They will, they've already been creating a state of chaos and confusion, right? But we want the United States to fall. Darwin was against their agenda. And we won the presidency. Okay. He did get help from Russia. He did get help from the Saudis. He also got help from a lot of Republicans in India, which is a continental college hall. And he got a lot of support from Republicans and Pete. Oh, yeah. But, um, the elections, yeah, they weren't there, but he wanted the electrical college votes. Right, right. Which is the Republican vote, basically, according to it, okay? He didn't get the, the popular. Popular. Right, right. I, I, I do. He, so basically, the interior, he got, he made his president elect by the electoral college. So he made. The situation is that he still hasn't kicked out the corruption from the system. He's letting this stay due to a uh, money base. Because they all like making money. That's why they're all billionaires, etc. So there's only a few, this select few of that run the country. Oh, the. Mm. So, if it, I know you may or may not, I know you're going to believe me. Um, you have what's called the Illuminati. 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 We are Illuminati. Okay. They made it in dance. Basically, what it means, illuminated. Okay. Okay. Um, they do satanic ritual abuse, which is basically CIA mind programming techniques. And she's the old family, kids, uh, et cetera, in the crew. And they bond that way, okay? So they do, they do animal abuse, killing of animals, blood sacrifices and everything in the Bohemian Grove, okay? All right. The Bohemian Grove, the bushes go there. Um, George C. and George, both of them are in the same agenda. Um, they caught they cuddles with the Clintons, okay? So is Donald Trump. He's also a distant Kogan. So if you see, there's a direct correlation of the presence of the United States being bonded to the family ties, okay? Good. And all these family ties, while well, not the, go back to the same place, the royal family in England, okay? The, the family here of the Illuminati are descendants of the royal British family, okay? They have children to two stouts. Why? Because it's, and they, and they have that ish, you understand? They want like superiority of the red. They see it that way. But it really is, it backfires in it because it makes them simple minded. You understand? When you, when you ask, says so, so someone in your family, your kids are not going to come out small. You understand? They're going to come out dark. All right? All right, Greg, what do you got? Here we go again. We're seeing more big movements. Scott, to your point, he believes what he's saying. He's pontificating. He's doing this stuff. And I've lived among people who were like this in my army careers, because when you think of the military, you've got all kinds of people from all walks of life, some of them who may think they know a lot more about something than they do if they read and read and read. And in today's world where you can digest information sitting in a box and never get a second input, you can believe things that really aren't true. You don't have to be schizophrenic to believe things that aren't true. It helps is probably the, one of them. But I mean, I read today a thing called gravity deniers. How do you deny gravity? That's an interesting one for me. Don't know how you do that, but... I guess you could jump off a cliff and test it and just look and see how it works. There's lots of ways of being the smartest guy you know. And sometimes people don't tell you that you're stupid when you're saying this kind of stuff. And so if you just keep doing it and people nod and blink and say, OK, then there you go. Watch when he's thinking, when he's coming up with all these pontifications, his eyes are going to the same exact place. So we're going to look for him to be going there when he's pontificating about something versus giving us facts. He's got long vowels at key points of his story, which means he's fishing and asking for belief at the same time he's doing um. Then he gets to kind of what I would call a really drunk talk where he might know something, but his brain is misfiring in terms of how to put it together. Mark, I think you and I have talked before about 
World War I was nothing but a family feud. Most people don't realize it because all those people were cousins. Well, that doesn't mean that all the Americans were in charge of cousins, too, because there's a little bit different system than there was in World War I. But if your brain is already firing and making those connections, and you're an iconic thinker, an iconic thinker, something I refer to in one of my books as a person who fills in the blanks to attach things, then you're going to say, well, if it's true there, it's true here. And that's what we're seeing a fair amount is it's like a drunk telling you a story and he's connecting facts that don't that don't connect. My first question, and I went to look, was he under the influence of some kind of drug? You would think you'd find that in the shooting report. Didn't see anything. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Uh, funny thing I did tell Scott is there was a there was a gunfight there, Chase. There were six guns involved. Guess what they were? All Glock 17s. Every one of them. <laughs> Pretty funny. So is this just something he's heard? Is this something he's read somewhere? Is it is disjointed mind? We can't tell. But in, in a conversation where I'm talking to the guy, we dig in and want to know more about, where'd you learn that? But you don't do that when you're after collecting information about a possible presidential shooter and you're the Secret <coughs> Service. You do want to poke enough, and I would try a rational test. I would feed him back a story and then say, what did you hear? And see how his brain reorganized my thoughts to see if maybe this guy is not clear of thought. And I would make a note in my report, hey, this guy says this, but I don't trust him because my rational test went this way. If he takes your facts and puts them in a, in a weird pattern too, you know that his brain sorts things differently. So there's lots of ways to test. Your intelligence tests, you do the same way and that kind of thing. Um, just because he believes it, doesn't make it true, but it will make him signal. You know, people always ask me on these when we do TV things. So Costanza was right. If you believe it, it, it can't be a lie or you can't be busted for a lie. To a certain degree, we see that. See, his body language is big. He's talking about all that. What we have to be careful about when I want to get reliability of information, I want a coherent source with access to information. Something I believe that I don't believe is not important. Just because Chase may tell me something that sounds really outlandish in an interrogation if he had access and he is reliable as a person and coherent, I write that down and I say, this is what this coherent source told me in these words. It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. I may have my own opinion. We don't interpret. That's a big thing because people always ask about how do you get rid of bias? That's how you get rid of bias. Don't believe that you know the truth. Find out what that person says, why. And then you have to do some kind of rationality test to figure out what they are. Again, he's still using more of the big three pieces Less of the two. He's not using adapters and barriers. He's using the other. Scott, what do you got? All right. He's back to putting his legs in the chair. So he's relaxing a little bit more. The show's confidence. Again, this could be, you could look at it and say he was being a little bit arrogant, you know, because he's got so much information that, you know, he feels good about doing that. And he may think he has. And I think he he's under the impression he's got information enough that he can just barely put it out there and sort of show it real quick and go like that and show them the information and try to make a deal with these guys because he doesn't know how much trouble he's in yet. Or maybe he thinks he's in a whole lot. Maybe he doesn't think he's in much at all. But he thinks he can, I'm under the impression he thinks he can make a deal with this information he's got because we'll see him start trying to leak a little bit of this out and say, well, I might be able to get this information. I might be able to do this in a, in a couple of videos. So I think he's sort of setting that up as he goes along. And then his cadence slows down. He leans in. He starts talking about the Illuminati. And so then he gets back into his teaching phase because he's trying to teach these guys about this wacko world he's come up with or that he lives in. So I think that's um, pretty much what we're seeing here. Not a, not a whole lot different than, than the first one. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, look, I'm going to, let's say, frame everything that I'm saying in this with the idea of just because you're paranoid, it doesn't mean that they're not after you. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean... They're not listening and watching you right now. But what we do have here is a great recitation of the works of David Icke. Now, for me, David Icke is the best aggregator of conspiracy theory. I mean, there's three volumes where he aggregates it at a level which nobody else has ever done and makes links that nobody else has, has made. He's an incredible, um, let's just say, aggregator and historian of that genre that that thought process let's let's call it but this individual here is giving us nothing new nothing new on that so there is no first hand experience or first hand information or any new information on this from my point of view there is there is going to come some first hand uh, or or or, or uh, his idea of first hand information but in this uh, not at all 
but he's you know whatever wherever he's got this aggregated information from he's he's got it fairly well apart from he you know mispronounces some stuff certainly but he's got it fairly well as good as as if i told you the story of lord of the rings or even some of the stories from the bible i know them really well i know lord of the rings really well I know the bible really well i could tell you the stories and you might go god that seems like it pretty much must have happened then. Well, I wasn't there at the time. I wasn't there at the time. And one is certainly fantasy and one has some historical backing to it, but I could tell it in such a way because I'm immersed in the stories. And that's why I think he's able to lean back and be very matter of fact around stuff which he has no factual knowledge of. He doesn't have information here, which has been, he's actually seen it and he's been with somebody else who has seen it. There's no um, sensible data on this, i.e. he has sensed it. It's not sensible. So it's not factual what he's saying. It's reported as fact and reported really well by him as fact. Doesn't mean it's fact at the same time. Just because it seems paranoid doesn't mean they're not after him right now. Um, look, this, what is the story here? The story here, going back to this idea, we got Hegel's dialectic, we got the Marxist idea of there are people in charge and then everybody else and everybody has to go and get those people in charge. It's class war. He has got this idea of aristocratic rule. The aristocrats, the elites ruling over all people, that kind of sheep idea, that sheeple uh, idea. Um, the, the general populace are dehumanised and animals in the view of the elite. Now, that's either true or false or something in between, as you've probably heard me say on many, many times, but that's the world he lives in. That's whether it's true or false, that's the story that he's living in right now. And he's retelling us that story of there's other people in charge and we're not, uh, we are mere animals to them. Uh, okay, that's all I got on that one. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with you all. This the type of behavior is what they would probably call schizotypal, uh, schizotypal behavior. Uh, this level of conviction in these beliefs about secret societies and elite corruption is looks very strong. And he speaks with certainty about the Illuminati and ritual abuse and the interconnectedness of these powerful families. Like he's I think he mentions the Bushes, the Clintons and Trump, his detailed elaboration of these conspiracies. And his confidence in revealing uh, hidden truths, I think, suggests a deep commitment to these ideas, which might have driven the violent crimes. It's the same level of commitment that would have driven some kind of a crime like a shooting there. So to get into a little neuroscience about this, if we talk about our amygdala, it – a heightened activity in, in that region of the brain can amplify these feelings of fear and distrust. And I'm talking about the incident he was involved in. Keep in mind, this is 2018. Is that right? So this is long before any assassination attempt or anything like that. And any amygdala activity, if it's too high, it can lead to paranoia. And we have our prefrontal cortex, which is right behind your forehead, it might show some diminished activity in cases of extreme conviction and in delusion. And this is proven in, in many, many studies. And if he has high levels of dopamine, uh, which is why I think most criminals should receive a neurotransmitter test, just so we can collect the data for some of this stuff. Uh, this is our reward and reinforcement neurotransmitter. It could be driving his sense of purpose and validation when he's engaging with these beliefs. So he gets rewarded for embracing and acting on those ideas. And then we have this part of our brain called locus ceruleus, um, which is number one thing that it does. It detects novelty. That's why there's so many 
things out there that up until 1977, they thought it was just about facial expressions, but it detects changes in the facial expressions. The new novelty part of the facial expression is what it really looks at. So it plays a, a role in arousal and stress and attention. So it releases this stuff called norepinephrine. It's a stress-related neurotransmitter. When that is overstimulated, it can heighten anxiety and fear and vigilance, and it makes somebody hyper-focused, hyper-focused. And this is this part of the brain that locus ceruleus is has elevated activity in almost 90% of people with schizotypal behavior, which is very interesting. So if you want to look at all of these brain conditions, it's not when you watch a movie with somebody who's like wildly obsessed with some crime or something, and they've got that like, like secret room in their house that has all the crap everywhere and like black and white photos and stuff. This this brain activity is the yarn that's tied between them all. It's not the objects themselves. It's the yarn that, that this person is using to tie all of these things together. That's what makes that stuff possible. So we see delusions of grandeur, fixation on this power structure, and uh, some reinforcement there. And there's a sense of control and purpose, which I think strengthens his commitment to to all of these ideas. So I think that's what could be happening from a physiological perspective, not just psychological. Because a lot of times we have all kinds of people in medicine see a psychological thing because I'm looking at it and watching psychological stuff happen. And I instantly rule out and forget about a physiological root. Mm -hmm. So, if he I know you may or may not, I know you hit it up in the evening. Um, you have what's called the Illuminati. 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 We have the Illuminati. We have the Illuminati. Okay. Take meds and dance. Basically what it means, illuminated. Okay. Okay. Um, they do satanic ritual abuse, which is basically CIA mind programming techniques. And she's the old family, kids, uh, et cetera, in the crew. And they bond that way, okay? So they do... They do... Uh, animal abuse, uh, killing of animals, blood sacrifices, and everything in the bohemian grove, okay? All right. The bohemian grove, the bushes go there. Um, George C. and George, both of them are in the same agenda. Um, they caught, they cause with the Clintons, okay? So is Donald Trump. He's also a distant COVID. So if you see, there's a direct correlation of the presence of the United States being bonded to family ties, okay? Good. And all these family ties, while not the, could go back to the same place, the royal family in England, okay? The, the family here of the Illuminati, are descendants of the royal British family, okay? They have children to two these styles. Why? Because it's, and they, and they have that ish, you understand? They want, like, superiority of the red. I mean, they see it that way. But it really is, it backfires in it because it makes them simple-minded. You understand? When you, when you ask, Says so, to so someone in your family, your kids are not going to come on small. You understand? They're going to come up dog. All right? Horrible. Turn his back. But he's still trying to negotiate a peaceful way out. And they have an agenda to kill it. Okay. Exams. If you look at the Illuminati card exam, okay? You don't mean to up the game, the Illuminati card game. I'm not familiar with it, so help me understand. It's a card. It's a card game. That tells exactly what their agenda is. Gotcha. It's called mental pre-program. That means that you predispose a rig once you play this, your mind. So you predispose that this happening mm -hmm. and you accepting it. Okay. So they have the facial dawn dead and then, well, uh, we'll see. All right. I'm not crazy. They had a picture of the shop, but they also had twin towers. They had everything on the picture. Okay, from A to Z. So it's kind of like a hidden agenda, which they try to make it open to our eyes, but we can't, we, we, 
they'll see it was so busy working. It's kind of like well, uh, hidden in plain sight. It's hidden. Uh, and I think I see what you're saying. Though. Okay. Okay, Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So I'm going to kind of leap on top of what you were saying there, Chase, about the brain. In my view, the brain is not a knowledge machine. It's a best guess machine. And sometimes it guesses so right so often that we go, I really know stuff. And, but really, we're just predicting patterns. And so what are the patterns that we're seeing here? I've seen a pattern, because Scott was just asking uh, earlier, just uh, between takes here, of uh, who's this guy look like? As far as I can understand, it's Bruce Willis from 12 Monkeys. I mean, dressed exactly the same. And in the 12 Monkeys narrative, pretty much. That, oh, that, yeah. Nicely done. Yeah, so here's what I need to know. Did 12 Monkeys predict this happening? Did 12 Monkeys predict this person? Or have I just made a link between the two? Chase, with those, those little, you know, red, <laughs> red things between the black and white photographs. Is there a pattern that the world is trying to follow? Or is it me doing it? Or, or does prediction traced far back enough just become inevitable? Was it just inevitable that a situation like this would show up eventually, like those monkeys, you know, to eventually they're going to do the complete works of Shakespeare, inevitably, if you hang a lot, hang around long enough. Now, I don't know the answer to this. You know, philosophers have been trying to debate that one for a long, long time. But look how easy is, is it for me to go, hang on, this is Bruce Willis from 12 Monkeys, same narrative, same, same thing going on. I reckon Terry Gilliam had already predict, predicted this, just like this guy reckons that um, that a game maker in America had already predicted the two towers and uh, 9-11 and uh, um, uh, Trump being shot, okay? That's, that's or, or, or an attempt on Trump's life is already predicting that, a game. Well, if I go and look at the cards on those games, cards, cards are full of patterns. I mean, uh, if, they, if cards weren't full of patterns, we'd never be able to look at those Look at those cards and go, oh, I see what that is. In that card game, it's, it's the enough is enough card and the charismatic leader card. Um, they don't, I mean, yeah, you can. You can kind of, if, you, if you're in the right frame of mind, you can put the piece of red string between them. But, you know, maybe not. Depends on your frame of mind. So um, all I want to say here is beautiful piece of, pattern recognition going on here but just because the patterns are recognized and they're put together by these red pieces of string again doesn't make it factual and we're getting no new information from it as as yet though we may in videos to come we're getting no new information as yet just a regurgitation of stuff that is already heard in books or on the internet still lovely to be around uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? I think your locus ceruleus is on a rocket sled to, <laughs> yeah, to a conspiracy town. <laughs> it stopped by the mid-temporal gyrus, gassed up, and now it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> so, good Lord. Um, but I agree with you. Um, the interrogator, I think, again, they do a, they're doing a great job here. Because when he says, um, I'm not familiar with it, help me understand what's happening. He doesn't, as this guy's ranting on all this wild stuff, they don't stop him. They don't, because when you've got somebody puking like this up all this information, you can say one thing and they'll go off in a completely different direction. Because what, in, in my opinion, from a law enforcement perspective, what you're looking for is when somebody is giving you all this information, they're throwing out names, they're throwing out dates, they're throwing out places, they're throwing out all these kinds of things. Now, one of these two guys, one of these uh, interrogators, Secret Service guys, may have gone out, let's say if you're a cop, you may have gone out to lunch with somebody in Vice. And they may have said, you know what? That name is familiar from this person. 
that was a part of this uh, prostitution ring or missing child or whatever's going on over here. Let's see if those things connect. So they're gathering information as this guy's puking stuff up. They're not just listening to it and letting it go by. They are because they're after one thing, which is different about these guys. I think Greg's going to talk about that in that few minutes because they're after the one thing. What, what's he doing there? Because their secret service, their gig is different. So they're not going to have those in-town connections. But that's one of the reasons you let somebody just keep puking up all the information because you you can make connections with stuff that they're throwing out, possibly, hopefully. And maybe able to, you may be able, to be able to solve a crime or find a person with that information. Then Audi says, um, he's, he's talking about the cards, the Illuminati, Illuminati cards. And he says, um, the, the Illuminati, those cards tell exactly what their agenda is. And he's doing that. He's doing this chop kind of thing on the table. But he's, he's, he's showing you, he's illustrating Two different, let's break down the illustrators here so a little bit different. Because he's illustrating that, he's making that little chopping thing. Those are the cards. So they're not hitting on the specific words and phrases that normal illustrators hit on when your brain is emphasizing specific words and phrases. And when someone is supposed to be emphasizing specific words and phrases and they don't land where, where they do, that's what I'm talking about. Because there's something else going on in there. He's talking about something else. And in their brain... They're not confident with what they have to say when they're supposed to be hitting them, hitting them right on the money, you know. And Albert Ray, I think, um, was I think he was the first one to do the the studies on that to show that the bigger your illustrators are, the more confident you are with with your answer, or, and, and with that, your. <clears throat> I think that might have been somebody else. Who would that be? Who did that study? I think that was. Um, Somebody else. There was another study that came out before that. Oh, all right. Do you know who it is? I, I don't. I, I'm just saying. I don't know what it is. I don't think. That, I think he's the first one that really got deep into this. Is what I'm saying. I think it might have been Paul Ekman <laughs> who did that. I don't think so, dude. I bet you. What do you, what do you want to bet? I'll bet you. <laughs> I'll bet you this. I'll bet you this. If you're wrong, okay, if either one of us is wrong, if you're wrong, here's what you have to do for this. After this video, the next video setup, you got to wear whatever Zoom filter I say you got to wear, you got to wear. <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'll wear whatever Zoom filter you That's want fine. me to wear. I'll wear that my the entire next section of the video. That's the deal. If he loses, he's going to tell his <laughs> everything he has to say for the next video, he's going to be wearing a Zoom filter. And if I'm wrong, I'll be wearing a Zoom filter. Anyone he Can't chooses, I don't care. Can't see what you choose. <laughs> Me either. Me either. Is that all of us? I'm, I'm glad I no. didn't chime Ch in on that no. one. All right, Greg, no, what do you Jason, got? Jason, Jason, okay, either way. So, oh. again, you just talked about Bray. Let's talk. Let's continue down the path that it is Bray. When he talked about illustrators becoming larger, again, we're back to that 3-2 rule, right? Those big three that we use to communicate, illustrators are the biggest one. If they're moving, that's a good sign. If they're disappearing, it's a bad sign. When we see those regulators, gestures, and, and illustrators increase, the person's telling a story. He's doing a great job of that. Downtone and telling, Mark. He's boom, 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 boom. Until he gets to the point where he's saying, don't you know about the Illuminati board game? It lilts up. This is all congruent. This is all stuff you you suspect. I would say a fish tastes like what it swims in. And if all you swim in is conspiracy theories your whole life, it's going to sound realist. You're going to believe it. You're going to start to – it becomes the basis in fact. I went this morning just to look around and say, what do people think? Go to Reddit. Go to some of those and look and see where people are all – their facts are very different than the facts that I read about the case from the law enforcement. So it's always interesting where do you get your stuff. Let's talk about for a minute iconic thinking, as I refer to it, and then let's go and talk about a good example from Sears School. So iconic thinking, I say people are on a spectrum and they're from iconic, which is there's more to the picture than meets the eye, to artifact, which is this cup is this cup. Everything, this is coffee. Everything is related to a physical object. Well, if you have an iconic mind that tries to fill in the blanks, tries to draw connections, and you're feeding bad data you're going to get bad outcomes. Mark, to your point, you can be very passionately sure that it happened for this reason. When I was looking for this video, I knew there had to be something like this, so it occurred. That's my opinion. I just <laughs> generated this. But in fact, the weirdest thing in the world is this manifest. is what's sitting out there for. Yeah, manifest. Ma oh, it manifests. Oh, yeah. Manifest. There's the word. So could this be constantly fed to him? Probably. 
if you let me take you back to my Sears school days, if I took you in and under high duress, told you something for three days and didn't dispel that at the end of the three days, four days, you'd believe it. It's why we had to deprogram these guys because we're doing anti-American jargon to them constantly. So we had to deprogram at the end of it. Now, let's make it more insidious. Let's say you're sitting in a one room apartment with nothing to do but read conspiracy theories and you're you're not re- reading anything but your rewards back now chased your dopamine and all your brain chemistry is getting rewarded for making those connections all that stuff is going on and it's building you a brand new operating system that really is messed up so we run into people all the time you don't have to be schizophrenic to be schizotypical, as you said, Chase. I mean, you can be lots of things and still be sane, still everything's working, but you have fed so much garbage into the system that what you're getting out of it is not rational either. And we live amongst a lot of people who do that. So ask yourself when you're reading this stuff on the internet, what exactly is it that you're trying to accomplish? And are you rewarding yourself? Or are you looking for a way to undermine what you're doing? I say this all the time. Because of what we do, if I see a car pulled over on the side of the road and somebody taking something out of the trunk, I look to see where they throw it. Just because I've done how many murder victims have we looked, talked about, guys, in the past four and a half years? Hundreds. Mm. So your brain starts to go, what's possible in a way it wouldn't before that. So think of those things. Chase, what do you got? Yeah. And to to add to what you said, to make it relevant for everybody here. The, the number one way that someone can capture your brain and make you start getting on board with something is to make you feel clever. That's the number one thing. Think about how many times in your life. Here's the most basic example that you can illustrate this point in like 30 seconds with. Think about the times that you've watched the news before and they say, tonight at nine, woman found mit- or woman is missing. Neighbors say they saw her arguing with her boyfriend tonight at nine o'clock. Your brain makes that connection and says, oh, I bet I know what happened. They don't tell you that there's a potential connection. They make you feel clever and they get you to hook into an idea. So anytime that you're seeing things and drawing connections where you feel clever, it might be maybe being done on purpose. But there's a to me, there's a fascinating disconnect here between his confidence and this irrational stuff that's coming out. Uh, but he's, I mean, he, we have to give him credit to saying somebody's going to uh, try to assassinate Trump or something like that. That happened. I don't know if y'all could hear my dog barking uh, in the background, but a little bit. This matter of fact tone, I think, suggests a form of cognitive dissonance where Adi doesn't see the contradiction in his beliefs. He's so entrenched in this worldview that even this bizarre stuff seems very rational. But I kept asking myself the question, why is he so calm? Why is he calm in this situation? So I think there's conviction there. He truly believes what he's saying. Uh, And unveiling these hidden truths to these officers, agents, is making him feel validated instead of delusional. So I think he also has overactivity of stress pathways, which we're going to talk about more towards the end of this video. There's some statistics around this that he fits into. Then we have cognitive bias. His worldview is likely filtered out all contradicting information and making it a lot easier to explain nonsense with certainty. But it's it's a good reminder of how our all of our belief systems don't have a firewall. We we can't go purchase an antivirus software for our brain. And it is very easy to hack into. I teach that stuff for a living. But I want you I want to just leave you with one thing. Cognitive dissonance is a weapon. So cognitive dissonance happens when a person holds conflicting beliefs or information. So in order for me to drop that comfort uh, or drop the discomfort down and make myself more comfortable, people will often reject, rationalize, or twist facts to fit some kind of a pre-existing view. So when, when someone exploits this, This can trap somebody in a cycle of self-justification, making them resistant to change, even when they're shown a bunch of evidence. This is how people stay in cults for long periods of time.
And if you want to see the most powerful cognitive bias manufacturing plant in the world, it's called social media. And that is a absolute uh, cognitive bias echo chamber that can create, proven on paper, it can create or worsen mental health conditions. Just isolating somebody in an echo chamber like that. That's all I got. Horrible. Tony's back, but he's still trying to negotiate a peaceful way out, and they have an agenda to kill it. Okay. Exams. If you look at the Illuminati card exam, okay, you look at me, clean up the game, the Illuminati card game. I'm not familiar with it, so help me understand. It's a card. It's a card game. That tells exactly what their agenda is. Gotcha. It's called mental pre program. That means that. You predispose a rig once you play this, your mind. So you predispose that this happening mm -hmm. and you accepting it. Okay. So they have the facial dying dead and then well, uh, we'll see. All right. I'm not crazy. They have the facial intelligence. But they also had Twin Towers. They had everything on. Gotcha. Okay. From A to Z. So it's kind of like a hidden agenda, which they try to make it open to our eyes, but we can we really don't see it. We're so busy working. It's kind of like, well, uh, hidden in plain sight. It's hidden. And I think I see what you're saying. Though. Okay. Okay. How do I know this? Yeah, that's what I want to know. How do you know this? Do you know Sean Combs? Of Daddy? Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever you call it. So yeah. If it is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Bonnet. The Louise, the Bonnet is a branch of the Illuminati. Oh, good. It's the black people. Wow. I'm from Africa, so I'm not a racist. You look like, hey, you're my brother, so I like black people. You look like, my mom, I was raised by a, by an African woman in my house, okay? And she was just a server, but she was my, my own she, you know, took care of. Right. So I know black people. Okay. Um, I had seven her with Sean, okay? And he belongs to that agenda. That's why he's so famous. They land all the contracts. It's his attorneys, which are Mark Garagos and Ben Lasalis. Ben Lasalis worked for Bad Boy Entertainment for four years and worked for Hillary Rodman for five. Okay. When I'm, I take charm the threat of death on me, okay? I don't have it, but I can make it available under secrecy. That means that I wouldn't be liable because I don't want to be given praying for it. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would. Cassie, I had like 15 encounters and I heard you lot about business because what they would do is Sean talks a lot on the, on the phone and on TV with people and stuff and I would be in the, I was like a sex slave, okay? For them, that's what I was. That's all, all right? Um, I caught burpees and I came back and I seen for burpees and one, one, they did all, did Mark Gervos and Ben Mercedes for his attorneys, okay? And Christopher Neons here was my turn. They asked me to turn in that, which was the video recording, and I did so. They gave it back to me accidentally, and it's possible, I, I threw everything out, it's possible I can produce a copy. Gotcha. It's possible, I'm not sure. Not, um, how does this lead to war style of so, in cases where delusions are entrenched like this, <laughs> especially when they're reinforced by social media, it's important to approach this really softly, which is what the interrogators are doing right here. If you challenge somebody's beliefs directly, you're going to trigger defensive reactions. And he's very convicted and convinced of what's what's transpiring in the world. The interviewers here did exactly the right thing and just allowing him to speak openly about everything that's going on. And I will nice. say there's a difference in his behavior when he goes into talking about his activities with Diddy. 
He puts his legs down. He sits up straight and addresses the officers directly. When he's talking about his actions and things that he knows about, there is not an indicator of deception that I could find. And I watched this over a dozen times to find a cluster here that would indicate some kind of deception. And I don't see any. And it's different. He's speaking about personal knowledge differently than all the other stuff, too. Mm-hmm. All right, Scott. I mean, Greg, what do you got? Yeah. So yeah, funny, Chase, you say that because I put a note in my own that's, notes. That's, that said, really? that's, that's sprinkles. <laughs> I put, I put a, sprinkles. I put a note in my own notes that said rewatch, and I did it about four times too, looking for the same thing. So let's talk about how we can tell when he's being deceptive. Let's go back to that three, two, and two, three. Right? Three are the positive things: the gestures, the illustrators, and the regulators. The negatives are adapters and barriers. When he starts talking about this woman, when he makes a mistake and says something fairly racist in the beginning of his comment about South Africa, you seem to get uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. He's aware that his mouth is saying something that it shouldn't. You hear a cadence shift. You see him barrier his legs. He crosses. He adapts at his clothing. He starts rubbing and pushing on the clothing. And then he barriers at his abdomen. The first time we've seen it, he actually closes up like this. So something is wrong there. And then he says, um, she was just a servant. You see all that. He's uncomfortable. And then he goes back to pontificating with his right eyes, with over to the right with his eyes, and he changes in cadence. And then, Mark, you said it in the beginning. When he told us about shooting up this hotel, he put his hands together in what we might call a barrier, and he does exactly the same thing here. Chase, to your point, I look really hard for clusters. I look really hard for clusters that he could be lying, that he's being deceptive. Didn't see a lot of that. What we do see is him— telling them the story, and they're indifferent to it because it's not within their intelligence collection requirements. They're probably making mental note. They're videotaping it, so it's there. That would get pushed out to bulletins in my world where we would say, hey, this guy claims he did this. Will that matter? Well, it's really interesting. I I always say this to you guys. You've heard me say it a hundred times. If you want to know what bad guys do, what kind of shit bad guys do, you got to talk to bad guys to find out because bad guys don't hang out with good guys and tell them what they're doing. So just because a guy has schizoid kind of personality, just because he can't rationalize and put thoughts together, doesn't mean he did not also do something that might be important at a later date. So we poke and we prod and we get as much information as we can and we listen to everything. And police officers have to listen to a lot of things that don't make any difference in their story. That's where you pick up source leads and you follow. Let me give you a data point. Read this morning on NBC Miami that within a few months of his divorce, he invested seven, over $700,000 in real estate. He was $14,000 in the red when he went to divorce court, but a few months later invested $700,000 in real estate. That's interesting. Mark, might mean something, might not, might be in between. What do you got to say? <laughs> hey, Sprinkles, will you put the horn back on, please? That was the bet. I kept poking it to- outside the frame. It doesn't matter. It doesn't bother me. There, oh, there you go. Thanks, <laughs> Patrick. Right. There it is. Become, this has become way more interesting than even I thought. Chase started off with the unicorn. Who did? Who Chase, did? Oh, sorry. Sprinkles. Oh, sprinkles. Started sorry. off with the unicorn horn. Of course, you see that on one side of the banner of the Order of the Garter. He then went for a rose. Of course, you see that at the bottom of the seal for the Order of the Garter. And then, accidentally, or did he, the lion comes in. Of course, the lion rampant on the other side of the Order of the Garter. Of course, an Illuminati organization, evil on him, that evil thinks, as the motto of the Order of the Garter is. So you see how we make the, you may think, Mark, what do you know? As, as I was going on before, what do you know of the Illuminati? Well, it, it, it's pattern. It's it's just patterns. And so why would I have that? Why would I have that if I knew nothing? Of the, and some of you will recognize that and some of you won't. And some of you will go, well, why do you have that, Mark? And the story could be more extreme than you can even possibly Imagine, I'll leave it to all your imaginations as to why I would know all those signifiers of the Order of the Garter and have that pack of cards on hand. But here's a signal that I see, just as you've all seen. I had sex with Cassie and Sean, and he leans forward and barriers just as he did when he was saying he went to Trump 
the Trump Hotel. It's the same. It's the same behaviors, and so it's looking. It's looking extremely probable given all the behaviors that we've got there. Given all the behaviors, it's very different from the other storytelling that he's doing. Very, very different when he leans forward on that. So um, uh, now, but then he talks about the video and the copy of the video and he gave the video and they accidentally gave it back to him. Okay, that's an interesting accident for lawyers who wanted to get get hold of it. You know, I would kind of say well, if that was an accident, that probably wasn't an accident from those two lawyers. That doesn't sound an accident to me. That sounds like if it if that actually happened, that's purposeful. But I just don't I don't know. I mean, but it but it's more problem problematic because we now get lots of before and after that, lots of adapters on his on his uh gown there. I mean we haven't really talked about the fact that he's wearing a medical gown. In this. Oh, he's just been <laughs> shot. He's <laughs> just been shot. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's an interesting, <laughs> an interesting look, isn't it? Medical and gown. It could be Jason Statham in the hospital <laughs> gown from the transporter movie or crank. Maybe it was crank. It, it's it's one of it's one of those which I'm sure must have come from 12 Monkeys as well. I'm sure it all harks back to Terry Gilliam, Monty Python, and Cambridge University. Of course, Cambridge University, where the elite are trained, are trained to become part of the Illuminati. It's all going back in that direction as far as my little red threads go. See what happens when you dwell on things that are fed to you. (laughs) Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right. Well, uh, he opens up that table slap again. And then he moves into talking about other famous people. He's bringing everybody in on this. No matter what the subject is, no matter what happens, he's bringing in all these famous people to be involved in this. You could say, um, what do you think about Kierkegaard's notion of identity? And he'd say, well, I'll tell you what, damn, Kierkegaard showed up over Jay-Z's house. We went to Diddy's house. You know what happened then? He'd have a way to work him into to whatever the, the story was or whatever was going on. So I... I I think we're dealing with a paranoid schizophrenic here. That's what it looks like to me. That, that could be, I'm just, just my opinion. Um, because he's got everybody involved. And, he, and then he goes, he, when he's talking about how he might be able to get information or might be able to get the tapes back because they accidentally gave them to him, it goes back to my theory. Maybe he's trying to work a deal here or say, I've got something that um, I may be able to get, to get out of some of this with. I may be able to, to uh, make a deal and get out of trouble. Okay, how do I know this? Yeah, that's what I want to know. How do you know this? Do you know Sherlock Combs? Of Danny? Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever you call it. So yeah. It is. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Bonnet. The word is, the Bonnet is a branch of the Illuminati. Oh, good. It's the black people. Wow. I'm from Africa, so I'm not a racist. Okay. Hey, you're my brother, so I like black people. Okay. So my mom, I was raised by a, by an African woman in my house. Okay, and... She was just a server, but she was my, my own she, you know, took care of. Right. So I know that Pete. Okay. okay. Um, I had seven her with Sean, okay? And he belongs to that agenda. That's why he's so famous in annual contracts. It's his attorneys, which are Mark Garagos and Ben Lasalas. Ben Lasalas worked for Bad Boy Entertainment for four years and worked for Hillary Rodman for five. Okay. When I'm, I take charm the threat of death on me, okay. I don't have it, but I can make it available under secrecy. That means that I wouldn't be deniable because I don't want to be given praying for it. Right. Oh, um, I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would. Cassie, I had like 15 encounters and I heard lots about business because what they would do is Sean talks a lot on the on the phone and on TV with people and stuff. And I would be in the, I was like a sex slave. Okay. For them, that's what I was. That's all. All right. Um, I caught burpees and I came back and I seen for burpees and one bar they did Mark Gerros and Ben Lasalas 
forties and thirties. Okay. And Christopher Neons here was my turn. They asked me to turn in that, which was the video recording. And I did so. They came back to me accidentally and as possible, I, I threw everything out as possible. I can produce a copy. Gotcha. As possible. I'm not sure. Not, um, how does this lead to war style fault? Uh, how does this lead to war style fault? Well, okay. the Mercedes guy, uh-huh. Ben Mercedes, that works with Mark Garibas. Mark Garibas is a Michael Jackson attorney. Yeah, out in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. He had a, a, yeah, he brought Michael and they all did him. Okay. He didn't overdose. They all did him because they keep the royalties of the music. Michael alone made $860 million and low last year, okay, in 27 June, which keeps that royalty. The music companies who represent the media and entertainment in the United States, most of them, Mercedes starts. Ken Mercedes, which is proven Mercedes child out of, child out of the EU. Okay. okay. So what they've been doing is they've been promoting a hate agenda against Trump. So people hate, okay, because they know he is very alpha, okay, very alpha in the sense that she likes money, he likes to make money, and he likes war, and they know they want to defame in certain ways with Stormy, with other people, because they want him out of the government, okay. But it's ain't hard because it's too smart for them. Yes, that will say. I'm trying to, right? Thought is intelligent. Is we have a similar type of intelligence and overview of things. The only thing is he's not seeing that here is a distant cousin of his and Obama have a different plan for him. You understand? No offense with Obama. I'm not each and every American, but she was part of that nine and evident gen that he's a CIA agent, an ex CIA agent. That's why there's so much identity issues with Obama. But who knows his real name? They say what, what he was born in uh, Indonesia and he's also born in Hawaii. Nobody knows why, because he's this ex CIA agent. Don't care. Basically, Osama bin Laden never existed. It was a creation of the CIA, and it was a bomber in a cave, talking and looking like an owl. And then they bombed Twin Towers. Okay, so my problem is... Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so he's back to this baseline for giving what he knows. He, he, this is typical for him. If you look, he's leaned back, he's relaxed, he's giving you this thing, he's pontificating, looking up to his right... This is more stuff he's read or he's heard and he's assimilated, and it's now a fact to him. Here's the problem with trying to report something that a person in this kind of mental state tells you is that you have to sort between. The good thing in the intelligence world, in the intelligence world, is we validate everything we get. So Chase may tell me, you know, there's dogs on the moon. Well, okay, I'm going to report there's dogs on the moon. Then we're going to turn a telescope around that way and look and see if there are dogs on the moon. We don't hurt people based on what one person told us. And that's important, especially in a place that's very tribal, because you may ask a question, the person may really believe and tell you that. Like we just saw him really believe and tell us something, and it may not be true because they've recycled all this stuff around in their head over and over and over and made it to be fact. Look at his relaxed behavior, and him playing with that bracelet, I think, is nothing more than busying himself with something to do is he tells you something that's just rote. Look at his eyes moving over. He's going to things he's heard. That's all I got on that one. Scott, what do you got? All right. As comfortable as he is talking about this, I think I, I think he's told this quite a few times. I don't think it's his first time telling this story. I think he tells it to, to his friends. He's told it to everybody else. And I think he's probably been shunned from a group or the clique or the people he's he's been hanging around because he sounds absolutely nuts as he's talking about this. To me, in a way, it sounds crazy. So his arms are pretty much leaving his torso. You know, they're pretty much away from his side. So that, again, lets us know he's he's confident, which totally goes against everything he's saying from a realistic point of view. You know, it just sounds it sounds off there. So every, everything's stable. His cadence, voice tone, and volume are stable. They're not going up and down. They're not bouncing around. He's not making any quick moves. Nothing like that. 
he's leaning on his right side, so he's balanced. He's not balanced, but he's he's relaxed over there. So nothing's by. I don't I don't think he's worried about this, and he should be worried about what's happening when you start to, when you do something that this guy just did. Man, there's a lot that comes with that. He's going to be busy for the next six or seven years just working out what's going to happen to him, much less what's going to happen to him, you know, how long he's going to be put away. So, and he's he's addressing that guy on the right, you know, or on the left of the video, on to his right, um, the the uh, Secret Service uh, guy, agent there. Because I believe what happened was the first guy, because remember in the first video, he talks to the first guy, said, did you, did you tell him the story about whatever it was? Now he's under the impression that the other guy is the one who's who's in charge or the leader, the guy who's who's the higher up um, in that situation. That's why he's talking to him. He feels like he needs to explain what's happening to that guy. So, um, and, and again, I think they're doing a great job of not stopping him and and redirecting anything at all because I think he he just fly off and start talking about anything else. And then his opinion of his ego and his intellect slips a little bit as he talks about, uh, as he compares his uh, intellect to Trump's. So he said that's how he and Trump are the same because they're, they're both they're both intellectuals or they're both you know very pretty smart. So I think that tells gives us an idea of the uh, narcissistic level that he's sitting at. But he may not be sitting there the whole time, but he may be, especially if he's a, a, a paranoid schizophrenic. It may just be something that he assumes all the time, but he doesn't live in that. In that he doesn't live that I'm the greatest guy ever or whatever. So which are, you at that point we talk about the clinical narcissist, blah blah blah. So I, I I think there's a lot going on up there, and, and I can't remember was it you, Chase, who, or maybe it was you, Greg, who talked about his it, maybe the maybe drugs have, have blasted his brain pretty good, and that's what we're we're dealing with there, because this is this is not it's not normal normal behavior, and the things he's talking about are not normal. I mean, if it is true, wow, you know, <laughs> that's all I can say is dang wow, man. So I don't know, this didn't look good at all. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah. So, so I think you're right. You know, he's told this story and all these stories a number of times to all kinds of people, had all kinds of reactions. But I think more interesting than that even, Scott, is how many times he must have told these stories to himself and going over oh. and over in his own head and seeing those reflected in the world around him and then putting all these symbols together, just like I can do. I can take... I can take the symbols and just go, well, there, we, of course, there's a conspiracy going on. The, 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 it, it tells me that. But other than that, you know, in this video, there's no firsthand testimony at all. So I kind of at this point have to go, look, I'm out. I'm out on this video because there's just nothing. There's nothing. It's all reportage, beautiful reportage. Very, very confident. You know, the interesting thing is just his comfort level with with this story and his discomfort with well the realities certainly that reality around being in the Trump hotel and therefore the possible reality of Cassie and Sean because of that there's a level of real comfort with these conspiracy theory stories world and potentially more comfort with the with the to many of us, the fantasy world that he's talking about rather than the actual world that he that we maybe think he lives in. Uh, Chase, what do you got on this one? Yep, I totally agree with you. And by now you might be starting to see the difference in his behavior when he talks about facts about his life and what he was involved with and the conspiracies that he's talking about. So here we're seeing him think talk about stuff like 9-11, and Osama bin Laden in ways that are completely disconnected from reality, as far as I know. So what stands out is how confident he is while he's jumping from topic to topic, which is typical for somebody that's caught up in, in delusions. So his brain is likely on overdrive. It's mixing stress and paranoia and a need to connect random dots into a, into a plot. When a person goes from topic to topic like this, you can be pretty sure there's probably mental issues going on. There are some exceptions to this. If someone's extremely knowledgeable about a topic and they're desperate to get information conveyed in a super short amount of time, they will do stuff like this. But in a situation like this, there's something else going on. The police are allowing him to continue talking and he's using this to educate them about 
the CIA and Obama and several other prominent Internet conspiracy theories. So he's likely suffering from maybe a psychotic break. I'm assuming him knowing all these people, he was probably sane for a, a, a large portion of his life. So this might be an acute or subacute thing that's going on in his life that caused this break. So psychotic breaks can be triggered by psychological and physiological factors. Even something as tiny as a vitamin D deficiency uh, can can push someone over the edge or losing a relative or going through a stressful time or getting rejected from a social group can cause a lot of this stuff. So there's multiple causes here, but we're going to really dive into it in the next one. Hey, you, you guys know Rodney Smith? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's important thing. Yeah, Rodney, our friend, just published a book. And I just want to make sure, you know, it, we don't interfere with the video going through the thing. We just published a book. He's a working police officer in North Carolina. And Scott, have you gotten on Kindle? Because you have Kindle. I'm waiting yeah. for the hard copy. I've got, I've got, I've got on my Kindle. I'm using, I've got this, I'm using my scribe right now to do my notes. What's but yeah, I've got it on here. It's a good book. It's a body language book. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 It's pretty good, man. I think, I think you'll like it. Hold on one second. I think it's, I, I can see what your body is saying. I think, let me double check it. Let's call it out. Yeah, it's good. Really good guy. Yeah. Really good. Oh, guy. Hang on. I think I saw him pu publicizing that on LinkedIn. In okay. Yes. It was on Instagram, yeah. too. Yeah. 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 So, Rodney's yeah. a great guy. Yeah, look good. Yeah. Fantastic guy. Um, we know him right now. I'll give it a look. How does this beach war style fall? Well, do The Mercedes guy. Uh -huh. Ben Mercedes. The worst is Mark Garibas. Mark Garibas is a Michael Jackson attorney. Yeah, out in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. He had a, a, yeah, he dropped Michael and they all did him. Okay. He didn't over dogs. They all did him. Because they keep the royalties of the music. Michael alone made $860 million and low last year. Okay. In 27 June. Which keeps that royalty. The music companies who represents the media and entertainment in the United States, most of them, Mercedes starts. Ken Mercedes, which is proven Mercedes child out of, child out of the EU. Okay. okay. So what they've been doing is they've been promoting a hate agenda against Trump. So people hate, okay, because they know he is very alpha, okay, very alpha in the sense that she likes money, that she likes money. And he likes war, and they know they want to fail in certain ways with Stormy, with other people, because they want him out of the government, okay? But it's ain't hard because it's too smart for them. Yes, that will say, I'm trying to, right? Dog is intelligent, because we have a similar type of intelligence and overview of things. The only thing is he's not seeing that here is a distant cousin of his, and Obama have a different plan for him. You understand? No offense with Obama. I'm not each and every marriage, but she was part of that nine and evident gen that he's a CIA agent, an ex CIA agent. That's why there's so much identity issues with Obama. But who knows his real name? They say what, what he, he was born in uh, Indonesia and he's also born in Hawaii. Nobody knows. Why? Because he's this ex CIA agent. Don't care. Basically, Osama bin Laden never existed. It was a creation of the CIA and it was a bomber in a cave, talking and looking like an owl. And then they bombed Twin Towers. Okay. So my problem is because um, basically what happened to the fund. The hip hop agenda is an agenda to improve crowds a lot in our state. See, they move, you need to involve the, they, they move all the dope, okay, all the dope from private jets, which don't get screened by, by, uh, by customs, flashback, high demon, you know, what demon they have inside the United States, okay, they, they move what's called high grade power and the MA, they move cocaine and they move uh, liquid cocaine in the bottles too. So, okay, so they put the liquid cocaine in the bottles and they move. I seen the liquid cocaine. I've tried it myself, having sets of day and cast. Okay, 
It's not good. He just all talk. Or I call the GG as leap of cocaine. All right. Um, how do I know there's a conspiracy against Trump? Because it's in the Illuminati card deck. He should not he, he should look at it for himself. But uh, let me let me bring you back to uh Thursday night, Friday morning. I mean, how did all of this I think I better understand what you're what you're saying, but what I want to know is how did that prompt you? How did that make you do what you did? That well, we get it to a point that she's assassination is coming. Moving okay. Because it's an agenda they portray on the me and the news. Example, Madonna is a kind of Mercedes. Ben Mercedes, he has her go on public TV and say, Oh, someone should, I have thought so many times of going up and blowing up the White House. But, okay, they give her that little message. That little message is here is message, okay? And because here he says that you uh, uh, Gary Ross and Gary Rock gives it to Mercedes. And they give it to you. Gotcha. You have to hold it. Okay, now I get it. I get all. You're gonna need a, you're gonna need the internet. So I can show you. If I show you the website, you just something more like all right. well, help. That's out there. Did you get his book, Chase? Yeah, Rodney's? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I can see what your body is saying. Here it is on Amazon. Yeah. Oh, guys. That's great. Paul Rodney's book, great guy, really good guy. We'll, we'll, yeah. He's doing some work for, like, Port TV and stuff these days once in a while, too. Great yeah. to see him on there. Good guy. Nice. What about yours, Chase? Did you do, yours is out, isn't it? Did yours just come yeah, out? just released it yesterday on Amazon, and it weighs, like, five pounds. 14 pounds. pounds. Nice. But uh, that's it. Nice. Great. So hang on, that's the same as the one that I've got with the, the massive one. ring binder the on that you spiral. have to literally have to hire a bunch of guys to take it off the bookshelf and like. Yeah. All right, uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, we're going to see him uncomfortable again. Remember when he was talking about Diddy, he was not nearly uncomfortable. When he talked about the sermon at his house, he got uncomfortable because he realized something was wrong in the way he was, in what he was saying and that it was being perceived poorly. Here's another one. When he starts talking about um, Hamas and he's confused by that Hamas comment, he gets to this point where he is um, he starts to be uncomfortable and he moves and he's adapting like all hell um, because of that discomfort. He turns to an oblique angle. He's adapting and he's barriering. He's getting back to facts now. Anytime we see him get to facts, he's different than he is when he's pontificating, pontificating. He's smooth. He's big three. Whenever he's telling facts, except for a couple of times, he goes into that barrier of his hands and that kind of things. I think he's likely full of it on a few of these counts. But when he's supposedly factual, his baseline deviation is massive in this case where it isn't in others. For example, the Madonna thing. Suddenly Madonna's an operative. He's ridiculous here. He's ridiculous when it should be factual. Unlike the Diddy story and unlike the I shot up the Trump story. It's a very different approach. Chase, what do you got? I will say that nobody would have believed it in the day about Julia Childs. <laughs> That's true. Hey, Lamar. I mean, uh, who was a CIA true. operative and a, had a cooking show on TV and wrote, I think, the best-selling cookbook of all time. Mm -hmm. So it's still stunning to see that he was talking about an attempt on Trump's life years before it took place. We, I've at least got to give him that. And he's also talking about things that we're all starting to see that Diddy is now alleged to have been deeply involved with uh, back in the day. So I don't know how to say this, really, but I think there's a lot of truth being talked about in all these videos. But it's hard to see where the dots don't really connect. And he's making connections and drawing these conclusions about sweeping narratives and agendas that just don't make much sense at all. I do think individual elements are truthful. And I think it's just like one of those TV shows where the red yarn is, is the part that we that have the biggest question mark about. So psychologically, it's a case of somebody making connections that aren't really there, or maybe they are, but None of us can see it. But when people think there's an underlying agenda, and sometimes they're not entirely wrong about that, it becomes easy 
to start seeing every unrelated event because he could be wrong about 20% of this. And then that says, oh, I've, I've, got, I've got some ground truth here. So now everything is interrelated. So I think he's convinced he's uncovered these hidden truths and his confidence comes from his belief in what he's seeing. The problem is, uh, I think some of these things probably might not be worth looking into. Not everything fits so perfectly and neatly together. And just as a reminder, if all of these people are involved in this kind of secret operation, our own government can't even keep secrets very well. Every agency has leaks. So I'll leave it at that. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah. Uh, look, it gets a little bit muddy for me. Like I would have this this piece about the liquid cocaine, um, uh, Diddy and Cassie. On that, I would have liked to have seen something more certain in terms of his mm -hmm. body language on that. It's muddy now on this one. He's he's um, he's soothing, I think, with his ID, his hospital ID uh, bracelet there. And so I can't, you know, what I'd really like to see is that real confirmation of this again. I don't see it. I'm a little upset by that because I'd like to see it on that. They would start to have a really good pattern of veracity to it. But it's, sorry, it's just not there for me. It doesn't negate what we've seen before. It just, I think, you know, to what everybody's been saying so far, it starts to get a bit muddy after a while and you don't know what's latching up to one thing and stories are now, you know, edging into each other and, and, and it's, it's a bit fuzzy. Um, and, and look, I think what he does here, uh, at the end, which is great is say, look, I got to show you the internet. I got to show you the internet, which is that thing of, if you could take in the data, like I took in the data, you would understand, you would believe this. It is that thing of, of people when they go, well, just go, go and read the internet. It's like, no, it, you need to convince me right now or you need to show me the evidence and the internet isn't necessarily evidence some of the internet may have evidence some of it may not but just saying hey go and look on the internet it's all there that's not really fact so uh yeah this this video here doesn't really do what i would like it to do uh scott what you got on this one i agree with you completely it's he's just ranting this is Pretty much the same stuff we've seen up to this point. They try to corral him, get him back to the point of why he's here. That doesn't work, and he keeps just keeps going. And not a lot has changed with with anything so far. So I won't rant on any further than that. We good? Yeah. I'm gonna give you that one, Greg. That was nice. Bullshit. Um, basically, what happened with Fonda. The hip hop agenda is an agenda to improve crowds a lot in our state. You see, they move from Union and Bob D. They, they move all the dope, get all the dope from private jets, which don't get screened by, by, uh, by customs, flashback, high demon, the world demon, the demon, the demon, the demon, the demon, the they the demon, the demon, the demon, the demon, the demon, the demon, the move the and they move uh, liquid cocaine in the bottles too. So, okay, so they put the liquid cocaine in the bottles and they move. I've seen the liquid cocaine, I've drank it myself, having sex a day in the past. Okay, it's not good. He just all the time. What I call the GG, but it's liquid cocaine. All right. Um, how I know there's a conspiracy against Trump because it's in the Illuminati card deck. He should, not, he, he should look at it for himself. But uh, let, me, let me bring you back to a Thursday night, Friday morning. I mean, how did all of this, I think I better understand what you're, what you're saying, but what I want to know is how did that prompt you? How did that make you do what you did? That well, we get it to a point that she's assassination is coming. Okay. Because it's an agenda they portray on the media and the news. Example. Madonna is a kind of Mercedes, Ben Mercedes. He has her go on public TV and say, Oh, someone should, I have thought so many times of going up and blowing up the White House. 
Bad. Fuck it. They gave her that little message. That little message is here is message, okay? And because Siri said that you uh, uh, care about and Gary Rock is that you must save this. And they give it to you. Gotcha. Yep, the whole thing. Okay, now you do it. I get all. You're going to need You're gonna need the internet. So I'd be sure. If I show you the website, you just have to like, All right. All right. There's a whole lot going on there. Mark, what have you seen up to this point? Yeah, look, Chase, you're always rightly talking about significance, and I think there is something of element of significance here for this person. Look, we all, we all we all try and seek significance somewhere. Some of us may wear lapel badges or whatever to kind of go, look, I this signifies this, and this is something to do with with me. And he seems most comfortable when he's playing the significance of where he fits in with these grand uh, epic. Um, conspiracies to control the world's populace and when he comes across or puts himself forward as some hero to to out that. And nothing wrong with having significance. Of course, we all seek that, but we want to probably be looking for significance with the things that we are closer to, friends, family, tangible things that we can touch and and uh, and taste and smell and, and are somewhat within our purview and our control rather than these things which, if they exist, are so out of our purview and control that our significance is attached to potentially a fantasy world. But the comfort that he's getting from this is extraordinary compared to the discomfort that comes from things that we know to be factual or we're now thinking could well be quite factual. Chase, what do you think on this one? I think he has a proven perfect storm here. There are a lot of studies that show immigrating to a different country makes you more prone to mental illness, depression, anxiety, PTSD, schizophrenia. It's proven there. But He's also got the other check marks of being over 40 years old, being a male, having a high level of DHT, dihydrogen, testosterone, which takes out this part of your head, which I'm starting to get now. And all of those things lining up, plus a stressful life event. Uh, he's got a lot of these boxes ticked, and that may be what's leading to some of this stuff. Greg? Greg? It's interesting because I thought, Mark, you know, there are two out of three times we saw him do this and we thought, OK, it's a barrier, but it's because he's telling us something that we want to hear, but he's not necessarily proud of. Second time he did it with Diddy. But then when he goes to that third time with Diddy and Cassie, it gets muddy and sloppy to use your word muddy. I think it becomes just falls apart. And look, it's really easy for him to come and have read all kinds of things in the media about Cassie and and Diddy, about Diddy being a predator. This has been in the media for a long time. The rumors have been there for a long time. It's not new. So as they say, a blind, even a blind squirrel can find a nut occasionally. If you spray enough theories, you're going to be right once in a while. So it, do, do I think that he has any credible information for me? No, and people are going to be really angry about that. But just because he doesn't have credible information doesn't mean he doesn't occasionally hit something right. He's just feeding on the bottom of data. He's getting data from all over the place that's making him believe things that we can't substantiate. And the good thing is watching these Secret Service guys go, okay, who else helped you? Okay, who told you to go shoot? Okay, all they care about is what they need to know. And I think they do a beautiful job. Scott, what do you got? For me, this is like the, the agents are panning for gold. That's all they're doing at this point because they can't get what he, they can't get around to the can't get him boxed in to tell him what he was doing there on that Friday, or what happened there. So he's giving puking up all this information, and they're just going through it all with a little sieve and saying, "Is there any gold in here? Is anything going to pop up? We're going to find something out about a kid. We're going to find a lost person. We're going to find something with a uh, um, trafficking ring. What's going? You know, let's see if we can find anything in there. So that's what that's what's happening in my opinion at this point. I don't think they've given up. But I think they realize that they're not going to get much more than that out of them because there's really not much more to get out of them. And if the truth does come out in there anywhere, there's so much stuff all around it, they're not going to know. It's not going to make any sense. He's got so many other things just globbed onto that, onto the, it, to the truth if it's in there anywhere. It's just going to run right by him. And that could be his ploy, too. I don't know. It's bizarre. So that's why I think, or in my opinion, it looks like 
um, the same behavior as someone that's a paranoid schizophrenic. So there you have it. All right. Thanks for another good one, fellas, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.